Hey guys, welcome back to Obi's Guide. Um, so just a quick one uh, in response to my little shout out to you all to, to ask for things that you sort of you know tried in a restaurant you can't seem to, to replicate at home. And one that caught my attention, and it's just such a classic, is the old cabanara. Um, and the reason it caught my attention is because there's so many different ways of doing it. Someone said, you know, just like they do in the restaurant. And it got me thinking, because there's more than one way of doing it. And both are kind of considered 100% okay. So what I'm gonna do is kind of stop at the step where it deviates. One is done, you know, you cook off your ingredients, you add cream, you reduce the cream, you toss it through your pasta. The other is instead of adding in cream, you cook off your ingredients and you toss the ingredients in the pasta together with an egg coddled through it. So basically you're cooking the egg in the hot pasta and sauce. Um, so I'm not gonna do that one tonight because it's kind of not our preference around here. Um, a lot of chefs kind of feel a little bit hoity-toity about the old carbonara, especially here in Australia, where we love it with the nice big cream and, and nice and rich. So I'm going to do it that way. It's up to you which way you want to go. I also omit garlic because we've got a, a fructose intolerant person in the house uh, who's currently standing behind the camera. And that really does make a difference. So with this one, a really good fresh clove of garlic really does bring something to it. So I've got my nice trusty uh, cast iron pan on. I've gone with cast iron because this is one of those ones where being able to keep heat in it is very, very important. I've got it on high initially, I'll turn it down. I've got about the recipes already written up and I'm going to actually make sure it goes up this time. Uh, so about a tablespoon of uh, olive oil there. Now always remember, heat your pan first, then add your oil. Um, that should get your pan a lot hotter without the oil smoking. Spring onions, chopped. Just gonna give them a quick stir around. Get them moving just a wee bit. I've already cooked off my pasta for this one. Um, just to make it easy for the sake of actually doing a video rather than you know you guys standing there for 15 minutes watching water boil. Um, and I'll toss it through at the end. I've used a little bit of olive oil just to stop it sticking together while it sits in the colander. Uh, and then I'm going to add mushrooms. Got, well, I think it works out at 100 grams of mushrooms there. Thinly really sliced, it's got one really good big field mushroom. Cut it in half and then sliced it. So one of the things with it is let them cook. Um, too many people I see will chuck their ingredients in, give it two minutes. Um, ingredients start to um, saute that tiny little bit. They start to wilt just the slightest little bit, and then they call that done. Well, all that's going to mean is that. You've got this sweated off, stewed kind of thing. I'm not adding extra oil. Um, the mushrooms will soak up all that oil I'll put in there straight away, but I now release a lot of the moisture. We want to actually get rid of a little bit of that moisture because otherwise you end up with all that moisture ending up in your cream and you end up with this kind of almost soup that's a lot harder to reduce. So part of having a nice hot pan is actually cooking off all of that steam and all of that moisture coming out of these ingredients rather than them stewing in it. Um, you've got a nice electric fry pan, they're good, but again, you need to keep it on high the whole time. And you're gonna panic, you're gonna feel like it's burning. It's not, just keep moving it, get it cooking. What I love about the old cabanara, um, you know, spaghetti bolognese and the like, is that they're simple, staple classics here in Australia particularly, um, and they're, they're cheap. So I think I probably would have put this together for maybe six bucks. Oh, I suppose I had to buy parmesan cheese, which works out quite expensive. But ultimately ingredients used, it'd be about six dollars worth of stuff there. Um, and that'll feed a family. So it's one of those really, really easy ones. And I mean, the fact that I'm basically getting it done in time, takes to record this, shows just how little effort goes into it. I got home about 15 minutes before filming this, chopped all these up, had the pasta going, and we're there. So you can hear that sound coming from the, the pan. I'm actually really starting to let them brown off a little bit. Don't worry too much about things burning. It takes a little bit more than you think. Um, it also takes a lot less than you'd want at times. Uh, and in, in my household, we don't burn things. We have to caramelize them. So that's starting to cook off a little bit. I'm going to add some just sliced bacon. I just use normal bacon bits. Well, I bought, uh, what I mean by that is uh, your middle bacon rashers, so the entire eye and shoulder bacon. Slice it up. Popping that through. Just 
Now I've used a fairly small pan for this because I wanted to reduce quickly tonight um, because I am time pressed myself. So, small pan, cast iron, lots of heat, it's going to reduce quicker. Does mean I need to keep an eye on it and also stops you guys getting too bored while you wait. So you can even hear now, as soon as I've added that bacon in, that sizzle dies off really quickly. Um, and that's where we start to get that stewing sort of uh, happening. So I've just turned it up a little bit more and hopefully we'll get it to turn up a little bit. Also, welcome to all the new guys. Bloody hell, we exploded. Um, I'm almost getting to the point where I'm scared of talking to this many people, but welcome to Obi's Guy. I even got a shirt. It's all official and stuff now. My wife rocks and yeah, she sort of thought she got a shirt and show it off while I do these videos. Uh, I'm hoping probably tomorrow night to do a, a nice baked fish and that's for a friend of mine, Bo. Happy birthday, by the way, Bo. Um, so I'm going to do like a, it's basically a whole fish on couple lot and it's basically, you know, whole fish in a bag, essentially. You use uh, alpha oil and that sort of stuff. Uh, and then the next one to follow after that, I was going to do a nice curry from scratch, which certainly isn't low on spoons um, and certainly isn't particularly simple, uh, but I think it'd be kind of nice to do. So now what we're going to do, I'm not quite happy with that, but for the sake of expediency, you can get away with it. Um, I'm going to keep the heat nice and high as I add the cream and let that reduce right down really quickly. So what will happen with cream, you know, starts out nice and thick, it's thick and cream. And then as soon as heat hits it, all the fat starts to separate a little bit and it'll go quite thin and runny. What you've really got to try and do there is then, similar to chloroform butter and the like, um, you're trying to remove some of those sort of, uh, like essentially the water content and just leave behind the, the fat solids, which create that sort of creamy texture without splitting it. So too much heat, remove too much moisture from the cream, you're going to split it. You're just going to end up with oils and solids. Um, so we'll leave that for probably five minutes, maybe six. Just let it reduce right down as quick as we can. Then all I'm going to add is a little bit of parsley, sorry, a little bit of parsley, a little bit of fresh parmesan. Let's talk about that for a second, actually. The, one of the biggest differences between what you're going to sort of make at home with a, a jar or whatever, or even if you just sort of do your own quick one at home, a lot of people don't think of really fresh parmesan, proper fresh shaved parmesan, so this sort of stuff. It's come straight off the wheel and it's nice and crumbly. Not the dry stuff that you can keep in your cupboard. You need real parts and cheese. It is an absolutely crucial part to making this taste anything like a real cabanara. So this is actually starting to heat up really, really quick. Um, as I said, I've already cooked off the pasta, um, which I then popped into a colander and poured some olive oil over it. And all I'm gonna do at the very, very end is toss my sauce through the pasta and serve it, essentially. There's also a little cheat I can offer you all. Um, provided you don't use too much cream when you first start, you can very, very easily get away with, like I'm about to. So I've tossed the cream in and it is starting to thicken just that little bit. Cheese will help thicken your sauce. Can't rely on it too much. And once you've added the cheese, you can't actually reduce it too much more because otherwise you end up with burnt cheese as well. So I'm gonna give it about another 10 seconds um, and I'm quite actually happy with it. And I'll bring it over for you guys to have a little bit of a look at the consistency I'm after. So I'm also going to add a little bit of salt now. So I've got maybe half a teaspoon of salt there. You can avoid that if you want. Um, obviously be careful because bacon is salty, so depending where you get it on, you may overdo it. Um, but remember, again, if your sauce is a touch salty, like, don't overdo it. But you are then tossing it through a lot of pasta as well, and it will actually reduce it down. One of the only ways you oversalt something, it's all this talk about throwing potatoes and things, it doesn't really work. I'm going to be honest with you, I've screwed a couple of uh, pooches on that one in, in 
the NOS quality over time until lots of stock gone and soup's gone and no amount of potato is going to fix it. Uh, the only re thing you can really do is increase your back shield. So in this case, this is slightly oversalted, it's going to be okay with the parsley toss through it. If this is all we're eating and I oversalt it, my only option would be make more of it, reduce that salt down. All right, so what I've got now is some really fat bubbles going over this and it's really reduced down. So, parmesan, toss it through, parsley, through, put a bit of a stir. Jess is just going to move the camera so you can see what I mean. See that consistency there? It's not quite runny, but it's not quite congealed and thick either. Uh, we're trying to avoid almost both of those scenarios. Uh, you almost want to just be able to coat the back of the spoon essentially so your sauce style consistency is fairly common. Now, what I'm going to use a big pot that I put pasta in. Just going to chop chuck the pasta straight into that pot. There's no need to be particularly uh, gentle or pretty about this. It's kind of one of those get it done moments. Now look, you can get all fancy and toss it all through a nice bowl or something like that and flick it all around and all that sort of stuff. But let's be honest, I've already used this pot, so it's already going to get washed once. May as well use it a second time. And then a little bit less water later on. And I'm going to use a pair of tongs and I'm just going to mix it all through. Now what I'm looking for is not big clumps of pasta with, you know, no sauce through them or big chunks of bacon and mushroom off the side. I incorporate it without overdoing it. Don't overwork it because all you're going to do is shatter up your pasta. One nice little plate. Just give you guys a bit of an idea of what I'm actually serving up. And because I've got a little, little gremlin there staring at me, desperately wanting some dinner. What we're going to do, lay it nice and easily, straight in the middle of the plate. Doesn't need to be particularly perfect. Guys, we're having dinner at home, we're not feeding the queen. If we were feeding the queen, she should be happy to sit at my table and eat my food. Good thing I'm actually not working in kitchens anymore, eh guys? Simple, easy, cabanara. Again, notice it's not runny, it's not this soupy consistency. Again, it's never going to be a pretty one, um, but it's super tasty. I enjoy it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I will get back to you with a baked fish recipe, and I also want to get back to you all with the curry. And there's also another one I'm posting up that I actually filmed a couple of days back on kind of, uh, some of you are going to laugh at this, but pack of pastas and the like, and my thoughts on food and that sort of stuff. So we'll speak to you soon. Have a good one.